This video will introduce you to ventilator testing and maintenance. This video was produced as an educational project and is not intended to provide expert information. Always consult manufacturers' information and qualified professionals before attempting to service your biomedical equipment. Always follow safety warnings. Ventilators are bedside equipment that act as bellows to move air in and out of the lungs. They are necessary for medical situations where assisted breathing is needed, such as in cases of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, strokes affecting respiration, and pneumonia. Ventilators can also be used on infants. This involves different input and output settings. The ventilator uses pressure differences to move air within the patient circuit. Positive pressure is used to push air into a patient's lungs via a tube. This contrasts with the regular breathing mechanism, which uses negative pressure from the lungs, expanding to draw in air. Exhalation of this air can be passive, done by the patient, or can be an active part of the ventilator operation. Ventilators have many settings that control the breathing cycle of the patient. Here, we show some of the suggested settings for adult patients. Respiration rate should be around 10 to 12 breaths per minute or BPM. The tidal volume should be 6 to 8 milliliters per kilogram of body weight. And lastly, inspiratory flow should be about 40 to 60 liters per minute, maintaining an inspiratory to expiratory ratio of about 1 to 2 or 1 to 3 to prevent auto-positive end expiratory pressure. This is different from the ventilator's positive end expiratory setting, which keeps the lungs slightly inflated at the end of each breath, preventing lung collapse. To summarize, here we show the settings suggested for adults by the LTV 1200 manual. Children and infants will need different settings. Consult your manual and a medical professional for your specific case. Some of the most critical ancillaries for operating a ventilator are a battery and or power supply, a patient circuit which includes tubing, filters, and valves that connect to the patient by a mask or tracheotomy tube, an oxygen source such as a tank or wall supply, a hose, and a regulator. These accessories and other components associated with the ventilator includes these categories. Sensors, which act as quality monitors to ensure that the ventilator is operating efficiently and that the air is at the correct pressure, volume, and oxygen level for the patient. Gas supply circuit, which includes any tubing, fittings, inline valves, and a regulator to control the pressure and flow. Check for settings written on your ventilator or manual. Also note that the hose connecting the gas supply to the ventilator will be a different color depending on the type of gas. Green means 100% oxygen. Some ventilators with yellow hoses will use medical air, which is 21% oxygen. Consumables are parts that should be replaced for each patient. They include self-inflating bags, filters, and the patient circuit. Most ventilator units have several built-in self-tests for easy testing. In this video, we will outline the self-tests of the CareFusion LTV1200 model. Other models should have similar processes. Look for a section about testing or maintenance in your manual. You may need to enter a special menu to perform the tests. On the LTV1200, this is done by holding Select while turning the ventilator on. The alarm test verifies that the audible alarm is working properly. Here we show that the LTV 1200 alarm option is selected. The ventilator passes the alarm test if the alarm sounds for at least two seconds. For ventilators with an audio sound symbol, verify that a confirming chirp plays after the alarm is silenced. To perform the display test, push select while display is displayed. All of the displays should light up, including the dot matrix, all LEDs, and the seven segment control displays. The control test verifies the buttons and knobs are functioning properly. To perform this test, simply push select while control is displayed. Select should appear in the display window. Test each control button, verifying the corresponding name is shown in the display window. 
After testing the control buttons, check the set value knob for proper functioning by turning it back and forth. The matching direction of rotation should appear in the display window. Exit the control test by pushing select once again and the next menu item should display. The vent inoperative alarm test verifies that the ventilator can detect and alert you when the device is turned off or unplugged. To perform this test, the ventilator must be on and running for at least 60 seconds. The ventilator checkout menu must also be enabled. You will know that it is enabled if vent check, alarm, display, control, leak, or exit is displayed in the ventilator display area. Turn the ventilator off by pressing and holding the on slash standby button for at least three seconds. Make sure to not press the silent slash reset button. Observe the ventilator for 15 seconds. For this test to pass, verify that the alarm tone sounded continuously and the vent in op LED illuminated for the entire 15 second period. There can be many possible causes for any of the previous tests failing. Consult the manual for the ventilator you are using to further diagnose the problem. Some electrical slash mechanical problems will require contacting a qualified technician or the device manufacturer. Some problems may be resolved by regular maintenance. The ventilator may sometimes appear to not function properly even when a ventilator's electrical and mechanical components are intact. Some steps to take after consulting your manual might include checking your power source. Make sure the battery has been plugged in to charge for a sufficient amount of time. For bedside ventilators, check the outlet into which your device is plugged. We demonstrate this here using an outlet tester device. The two yellow lights show that this outlet is wired correctly. Checking for leaks in tubing. To identify leaks in the tubing, fill a tub with water. Submerge the suspected section into water, making sure to keep both ends out exposed to air. If there's a hole in the tubing, bubbles will be seen rising from the area. It is best to replace compromised tubing, but in cases where this is not possible, holes in the tubing may be repairable with a safe tape or epoxy. Another demonstration of checking for leaks can be found in our video titled Anesthesia, Ventilation and Monitoring. As a reminder, the patient circuit should be replaced between patients. However, in cases where this is just not possible, the tubing may need to be cleaned. Tubes may be briefly soaked in a soap or chlorine solution followed by a water-only bath, but filters or any electrical components should never be allowed to get wet. Water trap accessories can also be useful for collecting and emptying condensate. Replacing filters. Unscrewing the side panel of the ventilator should allow you to remove the fan or inlet filter. This filter should be replaced regularly. However, in a setting where this is not possible, the filter can be bathed in a solution of warm water and mild detergent, then rinse thoroughly with water. Dry completely before reinstalling. If all of the above steps have been completed and the ventilator is still not working, there may be a deeper electrical or mechanical problem. Consult your manual and or a qualified technician or manufacturer for recommended actions. Let them know what tests and maintenance you have performed. This concludes our instructional video. Thank you for watching.